Hey, it's Craig with Auto Sausage. I appreciate you all joining me today. We're going to cover a couple cool things. And we're going to start, before we get to Paul Newman's Porsche, we're going to start with the website. So if you go to autosausage.com, you can check out my homepage and the Auto Sausage, Auto Sausage Auction Game, where we are talking about the Indianapolis Mecum that's coming up at the end of May, that auction, where you can pick five cars, or I've picked five cars, that if you guess the total price, higher or lower, you win a set of four tickets to the Cincinnati Concourse coming up in June. It's about $120 value. And I'm covering each of these cars. So I covered the 63 Cheetah on last week's podcast. This week, we're going to cover Paul Newman's Porsche, which is a fantastic story, if I must say so myself. It's actually, uh, I found the car a number of years ago. And I'll go through that whole deal and, and something sad that unfortunately happened recently, apparently. And then I'll talk about a Pantera, but on my website at autosausage.com, and I am video recording this as well, for those of you who like to listen and hear and see this on YouTube, um, I've got seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine pictures on the front that I've taken over the years. So the first one on the far left is a Ford flathead from a 1951 Ford Red Convertible from Mershon's up in Springfield, Ohio. Great place, they're known for their Corvettes, their C1, C2 Corvettes, and I'll do a video there. I believe I'll have one from a previous visit posted soon. The second car, I believe, is a Fiat Topolino convertible. I took a picture of that up at G, and G uh, I think it's called GR, it's up in Grand Rapids. It's one of the consignment places up there. So that's where that picture was taken. The third picture is one I posted quite a bit on Instagram that's a Porsche 959 and a Ferrari F50 that I took at Copley Motor Cars up outside of Boston. And what's funny about this, if, it, if you look at the uh, pictures on Instagram, there's a sign that says, no pictures beyond this point. And you can see the Porsche 959 behind it. And I asked Adam, who works there, is it okay to take pictures? And he said, yeah, sure, there's nothing special back there. And then I see a 959 and a Ferrari F50. So the fourth picture is from Ray Skillman's personal collection down in Richmond, Indiana, south, I believe it's Richmond, it's south of Indianapolis, and this is one of the, the Indy race cars, so he's got amazing stuff there, a lot of original stuff, like, I don't know, 150 cars or so, and what's funny about this, if you notice how the sticker is uh, inadvertently cropped for this picture, it says, please don't touch the display, ask for assistance, and you can just imagine how ask for assistance inadvertently got cropped for this picture that wasn't on purpose though. And then the next one, I believe this is from a local shop called Metal Craft. They do great restorations on Porsches. Actually, Porsche is my way of saying it. You can ask me why one day. And I think this is a 356 Speedster in the picture. I was just there yesterday, took some more pictures. Actually, I had three Speedsters there yesterday. So uh, I'll post those soon. The next picture, you can see a early C1 Corvette and uh, 19, two 1970s Corvettes or 1969-1970 Corvette. That's Eastern Corvette. Some great folks there, father, son, team, the hacks, doing NCRS quality restorations. And then the next one's interesting is a Cobra emblem that looks all beat up. So this is from a barn find Cobra that I haven't told anyone about that I will continue to keep anonymous. But I ran across another shop and this this Cobra here was on their workbench and it was like glued to their workbench. I asked about it and uh, it turns out the barn find Cobra I know about, it was wrecked in like 1971 and it hasn't moved since. Well, this guy at this other shop went to the wreck site and found this Cobra emblem. So I don't know if the guy who has the barn find Cobra knows that the other guy who has a shop has his emblem from 1971. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. The next picture is from Mecham, Indianapolis a couple years ago. I try to go every year. It's, um, oh, I'm drawing a blank on the kind of car. Oh, Pierce Arrow, you can tell by the headlight. And the last picture of this awesome 1966 Mustang picture is my actual car that I sold on Bring a Trailer last year, Boo Hoo, and was videotaped for Petrolicious. And this picture was taken as the sun was rising, filming for Petrolicious. So all that's on the homepage. And then if you scroll down, you can check out and Try to guess, not bid, but guess what the price will be and on a, for the five cars I picked up for Indianapolis auction. And you can see the price is coming up. So like I said, I've got the four tickets for the Indianapolis, I'm sorry, four tickets for the Cincinnati Concourse Elegance coming up. 
The next prize pack will be the Sotheby's auction at Auburn. It will be $100 worth of Tillamook beef jerky. That's a pretty big deal. And then the Portland auction in June for Mecham, it's a car care pack with a LED flashlight, this really like $20 tumbler, and these work gloves. So it's about a $71 value. And then Northeast Bear Jackson, I've got a bunch of kind protein bars. That one will probably change as I get better, bigger sponsors. And then in uh, Denver, Mecham, I've got $100 more of Tillamook beef jerky. Thank you to my friends at Tillamook. And I will be adding a lot more here soon. The grand prize is going to be uh, collector's edition autographed Star Wars cards, uh, unopened box. The retail value is like 200 bucks. So I'm not messing around here, people. So, and you can also check out the previous podcast as well. So let's get on with this Porsche. So I'm pulling it up right now. This 1974 Porsche 911 race car. This is one that was raced by Paul Newman. I won't go into all the specifics because you can see it on the website. You can see it at the Meekum website as well. It's a cool car. And I found this car because my dad was living in Canton, Georgia. And I can tell you the whole story now, unfortunately, because I called the guy today who owns these cars and I was told that he actually passed away like nine months ago. So there's no secrets here. Uh, so I can, I can tell the whole story. So as I'm driving by, uh, around my dad's house in Holly Springs, Georgia, uh, there's this shop and I'll pull it up on Google maps here. So if you're online watching, you can see it's a lot of wooded area. It's highway 140 going through north of Georgia, going towards Canton. And there's this place called Ely Paint and Body. And it is, uh, how could I say this? It's not the fanciest place in the world. There's, it's got a couple mobile homes next to it. It's got gravel, uh, chain link fence, old minivans, rusted out. You know, the, the sign doesn't even say the whole name. Anyways, it's just this little two bay shop on this country road and actually if you go into google right now there's actually like a 57 chevy you can see way in the distance in the background there so anyways i drive by i was driving by this all the time for years going to my dad's house visiting with my wife to different places and out front there would be a like every once in a while there'd be like a pantera out of the blue and actually currently on google maps there is a triumph spitfire uh sitting out front and this picture who knows how old this picture is so Anyways, I was always curious. One time there was a Lamborghini Mira, you know, parked in the dirt. I'm like, what is going on at that place? So I finally dropped by one time and I checked it out and I talked to Guy, great guy. I think he's got a bunch of businesses. So apparently he owns all the buildings back here and his hobby was collecting these cool cars and restoring them. So long story short, I went there one time and he has this alloy Jaguar from 1963 that raced at Le Mans that has, I haven't seen that show for sale yet. So I'm gonna find out what's the story on that car. It was in bare metal, hanging from the ceiling actually when I went there. So that one, uh, he offered to you know, pay me a commission if I could find a buyer. Couldn't find a buyer on a handful of cars for him. And so nothing ever materialized there. So anyways, two of his cars uh, we're talking about today. So I went in there and I, I, I introduced myself, super nice guy, his painter was there. And we walk in the back and he shows me this Porsche that I believe was in primer at the time. And I'll post the pictures on in the, on uh, Instagram here shortly. And he told me that was Paul Newman's Porsche. Porsche. So that was the one we're looking at here. It was orange for many, many years. I did the research on it and I want to say he paid like $350,000 for it back in the early 2000s. And he offered to have, he wants to, he wanted to sell it for 4.5 million, which is just super crazy. And the reason he came up with that number is because Adam Carolla, the famous comedian, just paid 4.5 million for Paul Newman's other car, a red Porsche 911. That actually won the lawn, it was more iconic. It had the uh, Apple computers, logos, and livery for a little while there. Much more iconic car. So that's kind of, I think, where he got the number. And then also Paul Newman's Rolex Daytona watch just sold for an insane amount, like $18 million last year. So. I could see where he wanted to come up with a big number. He had 4.5 and then the watch sold for 18. And I called everybody and nobody was even interested. <laughs> and, and granted at the time, I didn't really have any great pictures. So anyway, so the car was finished. It is showing up at Mecham. And uh, as I was reading through the history here, so the estimate is crazy. So the estimate, this wasn't on here earlier, is 450 to $500,000. So you can see how far off the ballpark he was at 4.5 million. 
So it has all the information here. One thing that was interesting is it said somewhere in the, oh, here we go. Recently refreshed by Jeff Works in association with Motor Car USA. So he says it's in Verona, Wisconsin. Well, I was right outside of Verona, Wisconsin this last week. So you know me, I looked it up and it looked like it was just a guy's house and the number didn't work. So I don't know exactly what that was all about because when I saw the car, it was primer. So if it was restored in 2006 to 2009, I saw it probably 2017 in primer, and then it said it was recently refreshed by Jeff Works. I don't quite get that, those bullet points. So anyways, I'll find those pictures, dig them up, and post them online. Uh, I'm very interested to see what that would sell for. And you can see right now it has a white and kind of a hot pink uh, racing scheme on it, which I don't like. I think the orange looked a lot better, but this is the more historic version that Paul Newman raced in. So I could see why they have it that way. All right, so the next one we're gonna look at, and ironically, this was in the same barn, in the same place, this 1982 De Tomaso Pantera GT5. So this car was over off to the side, and a guy showed this to me, and I'll have to admit, they really cleaned it up a lot because it's unrestored. It's got a one-off paint job. Apparently, the CEO of BBS Wheels was in love with the uh, BMW art cars, of which there was one painted in this red, white, and blue color scheme. So he had Pantera paint this as a one-off color. And again, I saw this covered in dust in the barn, and uh, it looked like it's been cleaned up quite a bit. So they threw an estimate of eighty to one hundred thousand dollars on this car. You know, I think that's actually fairly reasonable. The GTSs were probably the best Panteras. Uh, they were the most reliable. They fixed some of the heating issues with this car. As a basic car, they're probably eighty to hundred thousand dollars as is. This one is probably a grade level three, three minus from a conditions perspective because it's all original. And I think that's realistic because it's got the one-off one-off uh, color paint here. So uh, purchased new by Lamar Cheekham. So uh, let's see, original paint, bodywork interior, believed to have under 50,000 original miles. So cool car, pretty car, rare car, unrestored, not in the most tremendous shape, but um, it's pretty cool. So I think that's a realistic price for this car. So. Anyways, that's it for this podcast. Thanks for listening. I know there's a ton more I need to cover. I've taken like 10 videos of places I visited recently on my travel. So one of these will have a recap of all the cool places I visited recently, along with a uh, shout out to those folks who gave me some nice uh, tours of their place. There's a cool Jag place I went to. Um, I'm trying to think where it was. I was up in the New England area. So that's where we will cover off in the near future. So. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to play the auto auction game and we'll talk to you next week.